So just a quick lesson on the two etudes that I just presented, uh, Brower number two and number three. Um, so number two is a chorale. So in general, you want to think of it as a multi-voice piece and very horizontally. So like there's four voices or three or four voices and they're all moving horizontally. So you might think of four, four people singing together simultaneously, right? So um, in the example, when I played it there, I did use the fingering that is indicated in the score of P I M. I have to say, sometimes I have in the past played it with I M A on the top notes. Sorry. And just keeping my thumb for like the lowest notes in the texture. But it doesn't really matter which fingerings you use, it's still a challenge to balance the voices. One exercise you might want to do before you um, try to get a perfectly balanced sound is try bringing out each of the voices. So if I try to bring out the lowest voice, I would just do a deeper follow through with my thumb. So although I'm playing all the notes, you can hear the thumb the most there. Then I could tr try bringing out the inner voice with my eye finger. So instead of thinking about pushing harder with this finger, you might just want to think of a deeper follow through in towards the palm with that with the index finger. And then you could bring try bringing out the top voice, so the M finger. So again, a deep follow through with that finger. And then once you have a control over all the voices, try to bring bring them out uh, fairly evenly. soft texture that's actually kind of a tricky thing to do. If I don't think about it, I accidentally will play something too strong or one note will pop out of the texture, which isn't good. So besides that, I don't have too much to say. You just wanted like a really melodic, um, balanced approach. Sometimes the upper voice is really active, sometimes the inner one, sometimes the lower voice. So they're all um, really nice at times. In the third bar, or second bar I should say, I use my fourth finger on the F just so I can hold this low note a little bit longer. So just kind of sneaking that in so I can get a little bit more of the bass. The next bar you can't do much, you have to let go of it. Have a shift to third position so just make sure you move your whole hand up including your thumb so the arm just moves the hand up to that position best to balance those voices and follow the, the dynamics. It's pretty tricky to control all three voices and the dynamics in this piece, which is great. Uh, that's what etudes are all about. They're about improving your skills on the instrument in connection with musical ideas. So that's, um, I think, the majority of what I would work on in etude number two. Etude number three is a, is a pretty rapid movement piece in the right hand. Um, I would practice this in a few different ways. Of course, like just work on your right hand arpeggio work. You could use open strings. You know, you could just work on those on their own. You could pre-plant. So sequentially planting each finger one after the other. Um, you might want to 
play some of the voices individually also to get an idea of some musical things you could work on. So for example, you could play all the thumb notes on their own. You know, listening to the connection, making sure that you have a, a legato connection in that bass voice. And you could also um, play the upper voice on its own. And then when you put it all together, you just want to open your ears and listen for both of those things. And of course, the dynamics, right? In this piece in particular, I think the dynamics are a really big part of the etude because you have this really long forte all the way through here. And then you have it really soft. And then a, um, a mezzo forte here. And then we get to practice our crescendo. And then at the very end, you have really short um, diminuendos and crescendos. So you have to, it's pretty tough to balance when you're going rapidly. last crescendo, the last crescendo happens in such a sh short period of time that it's, it's pretty tricky. So he starts out with very um, large dynamics for, uh, for a couple, for like two bars at a time, but by the end you're within just a bar. So um, lots of work to do on those, um, on the dynamics in that piece. One last thing too is that when you get going in faster speeds in this piece, the left hand can get a little wacky. So just make sure you're keeping your hand very still. And you're just doing these little groups of notes. Do you notice that all of the chord shapes use free and available fingers. So I'm using one, four here, two is available to hover over the next note. When two plays, one and four can hover over the next notes. Kind of preparing for the next thing that comes. So if you want that to be fast, and um, you want to really aim for a compact kind of hand position. Don't be moving your hand around in every every odd direction every time you switch chords. Otherwise, you'll never be able to be efficient and get through it um, smoothly, right? So thanks very much. That's the number two and number three, and I hope to do a lot more Brower etudes in the near future. And you can get the sheet music from the link in the YouTube info section. Thanks.